Welcome, guys. Um, today, I'm very pleased to be talking to somebody very special and very senior in occupational therapy. Uh, we are going to be discussing today with Phil. Phil is currently uh, a deputy team manager in one of the uh, counties here in the UK. Uh, so he's working within uh, social services. And today's talk, we're going to be talking about occupational therapy in social services. Of course, we'll be making reference to the um, UK setup, but this can also be applicable to other, um, to other settings. So welcome, Phil. I'll invite you to introduce yourself and then we move on. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Tongai. Yeah, my name is Phil um, Chiza. Um, this year, actually 2022, will be the 20th year since I uh, qualified to be an occupational therapy. So yes, wow. a long wow. time ago. It's been an interesting journey uh, to say the least. So just a bit of an introduction. Um, when I left, I, I was working in mental health in, in Zimbabwe uh, when I qualified and uh, worked at St. Giles, worked at various other places. But when I came here, into the UK in 2004, I worked in acute mental health services and then the community mental health services. And then from there, I never looked back. I then joined um, the local authority, what we call them here, or social services, uh, working there for, for a number of years, uh, sometimes living, uh, doing private work, and then coming back, doing all sorts of um, you know, work, but within the local authority. Um, so about three or four years ago, I then, um, I left, um, I mean, I left social services, joined the NHS and then came back to social services as a deputy team manager. So working in a hospital setup, discharge team, facilitating discharges. Um, so, so I was working, I was managing a team of, um, social workers, one OT, um, and some support staff. So the whole idea uh, is around uh, facilitating uh, effective discharges uh, from hospital um, to make sure that, you know, they are safe and uh, they are quick discharges. Um, but today I want to concentrate on my current work I'm doing at the moment. So I, I, ma I manage a team uh, within the local authority or social services in Essex. Um, the team is split into two parts and I manage both parts. Um, so there's the core team, which has got about eight staff in there. So there's uh, the team manager, myself, uh, very senior OTs, about three or four of them. And then uh, social workers as well in that team of eight and then some support staff. And then the, the other team is independent. Uh, occupational therapist. So you'll be interested. Uh, there's a lot of what you call self-employed uh, OT. So the team that I manage, I manage a group of around, I would say roughly 50. So the, the number changes. Wow. So, wow. Yeah. It's quite a huge team. So it's called an independent workforce team. So I lead that team. Um, and, and then there is another group of staff that I support as well that I manage, uh, social workers and some specialist social workers, they're called a best interest assessor. So I'm, I'm a best interest assessor myself, you know, under wow. the, the, the wow. mental health, uh, yeah, part of the mental health, um, uh, you know, MCA, or Mental Capacity Act amendment of that. So I've been, yeah, I've been a qualified uh, best interest assessor. I think I've only met uh, one best interest assessor who's an OT and it's wow. myself. So I've never really met another, you know, the BIA. So, wow. so, so the role of the BIA within the local authority, they, um, they assess people under what we call a deprivation of liberty safeguards. So right. people who are in hospitals or in care homes, we just need to assess to make sure that, you know, we are acting in their best interest. So it's about... I see, yeah. I see carrying out capacity assessment, or looking at the risk assessments, the care plans. And then as the BIA, you make a judgment to say, yeah, I think they need to be kept uh, in this institution, um, but we need to put these safeguards in place to make sure that, um, 
you know, we are complying by the law. So these are sort of uh, statutory obligations that what? we do. Yeah. It's quite, quite, quite involving. Amount. Yeah, it's great. It's great. I mean, just listening to you talking, I'm like, wow, this guy. Uh, you might not know, but when you when you left um, Parenyato Group of Hospitals um, mm -hmm. from the acute mental health setting, I'm actually the OT who came. That was actually my first job. Okay, so yeah. when you left, then I joined. <laughs> oh yeah, okay, yeah, in 2004. In, in annex, yeah, okay, yeah, that's that's good, yeah, yeah. Well, so yeah, so just to concentrate on my, you know, the work that uh, social services um, run in Essex, okay, yeah. in, in UK, we come under the Care Act. So if you look, um, so the the work that we do is guided by. Uh, you know some some legislation so the primary one is the care act and then there is uh, the mental capacity act uh, the mental health act and all that stuff so i'll concentrate on the, on the care act so that you can understand what uh, ot's in social services do but um basically i just break it down into into three to simplify you know if you look at an individual's needs um there is what you call the the triple integration. So there is the, the physical health of someone, there is the mental health of someone, and then there's the social care aspect. So the, the need, so these are the, the three. So it's easier to understand that way. So under the Care Act, it's about uh, promoting uh, individual well-being. So they're about uh, you know, their well-being, their care and support needs. We talk about care a lot, you know, we talk about care. So that's the Care Act, that's social care social services. And then there is um, providing information and advice. You know, there is a big drive at the moment um, about prevention, uh, early intervention. So these are some of the words that are being uh, discussed or being, you know, the buzzwords. Um, traditionally, there was, um, we used to have like model of ongoing support whereby, you know, people, for example, get discharged from hospital, they're going to the community, we yeah. put carers in, there's ongoing support, there's a residential or nursing home placement, but now the emphasis is around uh, prevention, uh, early intervention. So, um, yeah, so under the Care Act, they talk about um, um, prevent, reduce, and delay. So those are some of the, you know, the three things that, you know, they're thinking about. So as an OT, I think, we've got uh, very good skills within the social care setting. Right. Uh, because if you look at the people who work in social services, it's social workers, obviously, and then OTs. But then the beauty of our OT is, is that uh, we always have this holistic approach, but also we always are willing to try things, um, yeah. preventing, reducing delay. So I think that's where sort of OTs are, are in demand in, in, in social care. As, and as I was saying earlier on, the team that I manage at the moment is, is it's a unique team. It's quite a huge team. We have got very experienced uh, OTs, a few Zimbabweans as well in that team. Um, oh. Yeah, some of them yeah, are qualified here. Yeah, so it's about, uh, you know, making sure that um, we put interventions that are, uh, Cost effective. So one thing that I need to to just add, um, maybe to the audience here in UK, there is the NHS, who is the biggest employer, the National Health Services. So when people access services in NHS, they are not uh, financially assessed or means tested. So the OT will just, will just uh, you know, people just go out, they receive the services, whether it's uh, equipment or adaptations for free. But in, in social services, um, we, we have to make sure that um, the people that are receiving services, they are financially assessed as well. So there's a financial assessment uh, okay. that, that happens for them. You know, for, for example, for someone to have carers in, uh, they need to make sure that, you know, they, they reach a certain thre threshold to qualify. So there's a means testing for, yeah. for this. Yeah, so so means testing uh, for for care, um, you know, so depending on the needs. So okay. yeah, so um, 
I just wanted to yes, yeah. I think you, you've given a, 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 I mean, a broad background in terms of uh, the Care Act and in terms of the the main focus mm -hmm. of uh, the the social services 